Greetings, folks. Welcome back to A City Full of History. My name is Dan Thurber. I am your overly talkative historical oracle, and today we are on the east side, overlooking the East River, right there behind me. And we're in between 53rd and 54th Streets in a nice little triangular micro park called the Sutton Place Park. So named because it's just off of Sutton Place, right behind me there. Now, these buildings here on the other side of Sutton Place today are some very lovely high rise apartment complexes, but in 1920, this was the site of one of the most curious structures in New York City, a landmark to people traveling to and from New York for almost 100 years, as well as a remnant of a bygone era of manufacturing the lead shot that was used in various firearms. Today, on A City Full of History, we climb the Yule Shot Tower. We're getting out of the library and onto the street. It really is a city full of history. You just have to go out and find it. George Yule was one of the most prominent merchants and inventors in early New York City in the days following the Revolution. He set up shop first in 1793 at a store down on Water Street, where he dealt primarily in raw manufacturing metals, iron, lead, and pewter, as well as selling cabooses, or cambooses, or any other number of pronunciations. A caboose was a small, self-contained stove made out of cast iron, and they were used primarily on sailing ships. The idea was that the flame was contained within the stove and thus made it safer to cook food when you're sailing on a vessel made primarily out of wood. In 1821, George decided that, along with sales, he wanted to try his hand at the manufacturing side of the metal business and consulted with renowned architect John McComb to design a shot tower. Shortly afterwards, Yule began construction on New York City's first shot tower on a farm he owned about four miles north of the city called Spring Valley. That farm encompassed approximately the area of today's 53rd to 55th streets from the Eastern Post Road down to the East River. Yule's first attempt at constructing a shot tower ended in failure. In 1821, late on a Saturday evening, the partial tower collapsed. And because it was late on a Saturday evening, there were no workers around and no injuries reported as a result of the accident, Yule was not to be dissuaded and immediately set to work building a new tower on the same site. By 1823, was producing lead shot for sale. Now, before I get too lost in the weeds about George Yule or the story of Manhattan's shot towers, let's just pump the brakes for just a second so we can discuss exactly what shot towers were, how they worked, and what they produced. Lead shot is a fancy term for a small ball of lead. Their primary use, especially in the 18th and 19th centuries, was as ammunition in various types of shotguns, as well as ballast or counterweights or any number of other uses. Lead shot could come in all sizes, from the very small to the very large. Manufacturing lead in such a specific shape on a large scale required a specialized process, first developed in England by William Watts in 1782. He melted lead in a furnace at the top of a tall structure and let the molten lead drip through a sieve. The smaller the holes in the sieve, the smaller the shot. The larger the holes, the larger the shot would be. The molten drops would fall, cooling and becoming spherical as they did so. At the bottom, the shot would drop into a pool of water, further cooling and hardening the shot, which would be sorted by rolling down an inclined plane. The spherical shot would roll, and any misshapen pellets would be collected to be remelted. Yule first sold his own shot in 1823, and at his peak was producing upwards of three tons of shot per day. His enterprising spirit led George Yule to become one of the most prominent industrialists in early New York, but sadly, Yule wouldn't enjoy his success for very long, passing away on September 20th, 1828, a mere five years after his tower was completed. Following Yule's death, his shop business was taken over by James McCullough, who continued to run the tower. Yule's mansion was bought by a Peter Hilton, who turned it into a luxurious hotel that he called the Spring Valley Mansion. The tower would come to be a landmark of the east side. Travelers up and down the eastern post road knew that passing the Yule Tower meant you were a little more than four miles north of downtown. The tower also appeared in various illustrations throughout the 19th century, as well as paintings by prominent artists Jasper Cropsey and Frederick Church. 
there were at least two other shot towers on Manhattan Island, one on Beekman Street and one on Center Street, both further downtown. By 1910, the Yule Tower was the only one that remained, and even that sat vacant. The city was expanding, and the real estate was worth considerably more, plus the shot tower method of manufacturing lead shot had become somewhat outdated. In 1920, the Yule Tower finally met the wrecking ball as well. Actually, it was dismantled bit by bit. Shot towers were notoriously difficult to disassemble because you couldn't just knock them over with the neighborhoods closing in around them, and they were very thin, some of them tapering to only 11 to 14 feet wide at the top, and it's difficult to get workmen in there to pull brick out, so you had to do it piece by piece. 1920, the Yule Tower came down, and thus passed the last remnant of the shot-making industry on Manhattan Island. J. A. Norton, the secretary for the Materials Delivery Corporation, which leased the land the tower sat on, spoke with the New York Herald about the tower's impending demolition, saying, We hate to see it go, because there are few specimens of building of its epoch left in New York. But go it must, for there is no place for sentiment in the building trades as applied to Manhattan. There's no remnant of these unique towers to be found anywhere in Manhattan today. However, if you come downtown and visit Foley Square, you will find five bronze medallions set into the sidewalk. And the one at the center of the northern part of Foley Square, also called Thomas Paine Park, has a curious picture on it. Now that is the McCullough Shot Tower. James McCullough, you may remember, is the one who took over Yule's business in 1835. By 1855, he wanted to expand with a second tower. And to do this, he hired architect James Bogardus. Bogardus was famous for his advocation of cast iron as a building material, and in 1855, built McCullough's Tower as a cast iron structure, an early precursor to the modern skyscraper. And it stood right here on this very spot. For Bookworm History, I'm Dan Thurber. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks for stopping by.